This program is made possible by the partners and friends of Bob Yandian Ministries. Coming up on this episode of Student of the Word. You know, Smith Wigglesworth said before he died, he said he had a vision of the very last end times before Jesus Christ came back for his church. And he said at that time, the spirit and the word would agree at a greater amount than ever it had before. Because for years, you've had those on the Holy Spirit side saying the people over here on the word side are more like just theologians. They just have to have everything by the word of God. And on this side, you have the spirit crowd and they flow easily in the gifts of spirit. You have to have the two. And the two flow together again, one with each other. For more than 40 years, Bob Yandian has been an expositor of the Bible, making seemingly complicated doctrine easy to understand. Grab your Bible and study the Word of God with Pastor Bob Yandian. Hello and welcome again to Student of the Word with Pastor Bob Yandian. So glad to have you here today and uh, looking forward to what we're going to be teaching today, tomorrow, maybe for another day after that, I'm not sure. But uh, just seen some things that again, you know, as far as I'm concerned, don't completely line up with the Word of God. And they're not heaven or hell issues, but uh, I want to talk about the, the power of the blood of Jesus and the name of Jesus Christ. We'll talk about that today. And so you'll be blessed by it. So you can start opening up to Acts chapter 17 while you're finding that. I just want to again welcome you and thank you again for being a prayer supporter and actually a natural supporter of this ministry by the letters you write and all those other things, but also a financial supporter. And I want to speak to those who have committed monthly to send into Bobby Andean Ministries. And again, I thank you for that because you are my partners. You're the ones who said, this is more than just a ministry to me. It is one of those father ministries to me because the Bible says you have many teachers, but not that many fathers, many instructors, but not those you can look to as a father figure. And, uh, you know, I probably in my lifetime had about three, four ministers that I considered fathers in the faith. And I never met some of them that actually studied after their books and their recordings and things like that and wished I could have met them while they were still alive. But again, they became a father figure to me, and I patterned my ministry after them, not trying to be them, but learning so much from them, incorporating it into my life, incorporating it into my ministry, and then saying it the way I would say it. And perhaps that's what happens when you hear. You say, well, Bob just talks like I would talk. Uh, he communicates like I like to be communicated to. He makes it easy to understand, but yet it's the profound things of the Word of God. And that's just a gift that God has given to me. It's not me. It's just the gift that works in me. And so if you like that and would like to support that, then become a partner with me. Go to bobyandian.com. There's a place on there that you can click or you can touch and uh, that you can become a partner with me and a monthly partner. Whatever you can do, I would appreciate. Many have started out small. They said as I, they begin to support me, extra finances came in, so they want to increase the support. I thank you for that. But if you're just about to begin to be a partner with me, welcome. Looking forward to you being on the team of a partner of Bobby Andean Ministries. The thing I want to talk about today is I've seen some confusion over the difference between the blood of Jesus Christ and the name of Jesus Christ. And it usually happens because there's like two segments of the of the of people that, you know, I, I enjoy being around, and that's the Word crowd and the Holy Spirit crowd. And, and instead of incorporating the two together, oftentimes they compete with each other. And the, those on the I mean, I had a lady tell me who was one of those Holy Spirit people, Holy Ghost people, she called herself, and just said, I didn't flow enough in the Holy Ghost. And she just said, you know, that uh, you're, you're a good teacher, but I don't think you're a good pastor, you know, because you need to flow more in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And she talked about the fact, you know, some of the things that she said. And I said, but that's not even in the Word of God. She said, I don't care if it's in the Word of God. The Holy Spirit told me. Well, how, how can you set yourself up as a standard? And why would the Holy Spirit tell, tell something through you that's not backed by the Word of God? Uh, you know, Smith Wigglesworth said before he died, he said he had a vision of the very last end times before Jesus Christ came back for his church. And he said, at that time, the spirit and the word would agree at a greater amount than ever it had before. Because for years, you've had those on the Holy Spirit side saying the people over here on the word side are more like just theologians. They just have to have everything by the word of God. And on this side, you have the, the spirit crowd and they flow easily in the gifts of the spirit. You have to have the two. And the two flow together again, one with each other. And uh, I've had a person even tell me one time, said, well, you're just too word bound. I said, well, thank you. I consider that a compliment. If it's not found the word of God, that either you come back to your common sense about it or you just don't do it and or you don't make a big deal out of it. And one of the things that uh, has happened is people are drawing bloodlines and they're using the power of the blood. And they'll talk about, you know, I call the name of the blood. And, I, I, and, and they'll even... In, casting out devils. They'll talk, say, I plead the blood of Jesus over this situation. Plead the blood of Jesus over you. And the point of it is, is the blood of Jesus Christ has great power, but that's not what it's for. That is where the use of the name of Jesus comes in. The blood of Jesus Christ has one use. 
and that is to remove sins. It removes sins in a sinner, and it removes sins in a Christian. It's by the blood of Jesus Christ that we are saved. He shed his blood for us. But on the other hand, when we confess our sins, his blood cleanses us from all unrighteousness. That's 1 John 1, 7 and 1 John 1, 9. And so it's the blood of Jesus Christ. So we're going to talk about the difference between the two, how the two work together. They are not opposed to each other. They're not fighting each other. But on one side, I think people are using the blood where it was never designed to be used, And again, we'll get to it from the word of God. Acts chapter 17 tells us, beginning in verse 24, we'll read down through verse 26. God who has made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. And he made from one blood every nation of mankind to live on the face of the earth, having determined or predetermined by the King James, New King James, having predetermined their times and boundaries of their dwelling place or of their habitation. Uh, What this is telling us is that uh, God has designed from the entire race of mankind, from one blood, all of us come. And that one blood is the one blood that came from Adam and Eve. He has designed from one blood every nation of man. And this talks about the different nations. I mean, we have African nations, American nations, South America, and we have uh, Chinese, uh, all the different continents around the world. And we have all these different nations around the world. But yet we all came from one blood. We came from one set of people. That's Adam and Eve. And even though they are blood, there are different blood types around the world, we still came from one blood. That blood is what gives us natural life in this earth. And that's what literally keeps on producing here in the earth over and over again. So we are oftentimes uh, dividing ourselves. And this verse says, I want you to notice again what he says on here. He says in verse 26, he has made from one blood every nation of mankind to live on the face of the earth, having predetermined their times and boundaries of their dwelling place. What he's simply saying is here is that oftentimes we divide ourselves by things that we can't help. This verse says he's predetermined the times and the boundaries of our habitation. You had no choice as to what town you were born in. You had no um, choice in what city you were born in. You had no choice as to what country you're born in. You uh, You had no choice on what side of the city you're born in or what time period you were born in. You had no choice over your a socioeconomic background, none of those things counted. You were predetermined by God to be placed here. Also, uh, he has determined your color. He's determined, you know, the uh, educational background. You're going to be sent, sent to all the different things that we have. These things we cannot help. They've been predetermined by God, and yet we divide ourselves by this. We have people saying, well, black is superior to white, white superior to black. Well, no, Hispanic superior. No, uh, and in different ways, different nationalities do have their strengths, and others have weaknesses weaknesses, but they have strengths in other areas. What simply comes back to is this. We divide ourselves over things we cannot help. You could not help what time you were born in. You can't help it today. If you're old and there's young people standing all around you, one day they'll be old and young people will be standing around them. It simply comes down to it. You didn't pick what time period you were born in. I was born in the 1940s. You know what? I didn't pick that. My daughter was telling me one day, I'm 25 years old that she is. She said, Dad, I wish I could have been an adult during the 1940s. She said there was such an innocence about that time. We'd just come through the war. All the nations were working together. There was, it's just a wonderful time. I said, well, you know what? You might as well stop it because you weren't. You can't, you can't fret over it and change it. God predetermined the time period and he determined the boundaries of your habitation where you would be born. How many times have you heard people say, well, I just wish I didn't live in this town. If I lived over here, it'd be better. I graduated from high school here in Tulsa. You know what? And there was, and Tulsa's kind of a family town. It's always been a family town. It's always been a, a, a gospel center. And there's been a people headed up their ministries here, like Kenneth Hagin and Oral Roberts and T.L. Osborne. And we can go down the list of ministers who've had their offices here in the city. There's been great revival in this city. And yet, when I was going to high school, none of the high school students considered that. They just thought Tulsa was too much of a family town. It wasn't much excitement. And if they wanted some excitement, they would go down the road to Oklahoma City because they could party there. They'd go to other cities. They could party around here, but Tulsa seemed kind of like a dull place to live. And I used to hear that and think, well, maybe that's true. And so again, but they couldn't help it. They didn't choose where they were born. They didn't choose their parents. There's times I wish I could have chosen my parents. When I looked at my friends and saw how wonderful their parents were, I thought, I used to tell them, I wish they were my parents because my parents don't do things like that. But you know what? You can't help it. You had no choice over it. You had no choice over where you were born, what city you were born, the place you were born, what state, what country. I'm glad I was born in the United States now that I'm grown up. I see other places around the world. I think I'm blessed by being here, but it doesn't mean 
that you have less of a chance of succeeding in life because of the country you are from. God placed in every one of us the abilities to succeed and all the promises of God are not for a particular color of person, nationality of person, a gender of a person. Now we find today women saying they're superior to men, men thinking, well, now I'm inferior to women and all this stuff that we have coming out about, you know, and now we have, you know, is there gender neutrality? You can actually pick what gender you want. The point of it is it comes back to this, you had no choice. And therefore, for us to sit around and feel bad because of our color, because of our race, because of our gender, because of where we're located, because of our parents, because of our looks, I mean, we can go down the list of things that we don't like and we say, how come they look better than I do? Uh, we don't like our weight. We wish we had different things, you know, in growing up. All that comes back to this. God is simply saying here, that is not what divides mankind. And he literally comes back to it. We came all from one blood. Think about this. If you needed a transfusion, blood could come from anyone, male, female, black, white, rich, poor. It really doesn't matter here. And blood type, it comes back to your blood type. If you find somebody else that has your blood type, you can get a blood transfusion from them. Your organs are not racial. Your organs have no gender. Your organs have no social background. We can have it from anybody. It simply comes back to this, that blood is the life of all mankind and blood is where it came from Adam and Eve. We are united together by our blood in our body. So it comes back to this, the blood of Jesus Christ was shed for us, not his skin. He shed his blood and people say, yeah, but he was a Jew. That was in his skin. That was in his flesh. Underneath it, he was just a human being, but he was a human being born without the curse. So he came into this earth to free us from the curse. And that's how he did that. It was by shedding his blood for us, shedding his life for us, and by his pure blood that came into this earth because he was free from the curse of Adam, free from the curse of Satan, free from the curse that was on this earth because of the virgin birth that he was qualified to redeem us, and that is literally pure blood dying for cursed blood. He came to give his life for us, a pure life dying for all cursed humanity, and we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So again, we come back to it. There is no difference in the Lord Jesus Christ. Once we get born again, it says there is no male, no female. There is no racial boundaries. There's no social boundaries. There's no educational boundaries. When you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, whosoever will may come and receive eternal life. When you go to heaven, there won't be a black section, a white section, a Hispanic section. There won't be a male, a female. There won't be a young or old section in heaven. We'll just all be in heaven rejoicing around the fact that we accepted the death of Jesus Christ raised from the dead for us so that we could find eternal life. You know, if somebody came to your house and gave you some money, you would look at them and say, I, you know, you're not my color. I don't want your money. Money is without color. Blood is without color. Life is without color. And yet, why would you complain to somebody about to give you $100,000 and say, well, you know, uh, did this even come from a criminal background? Money it has no background. Money has no taint about it. I don't care if it was used in crime before this time. Money is free from all that. We can use it for wrong reasons. We can use our body for wrong reasons. We can use our mind for wrong reasons, but it simply comes back to this if I needed a heart transplant, I don't care if it came from a criminal. You understand that? Because the heart is not a criminal. That person decided to do those things. And the same thing comes down to money. Money does not have any background. It's gender neutral. And so again, it comes back. Money is without sex, color, age, or anything like that. Money is that thing. So is the free gift of Jesus Christ and his life for us given so we can have a ransom and we can have forgiveness of sin. See you right after the break. Understanding and using our authority is the difference between living a defeated Christian life and walking with Jesus in continuous victory and joy. Jesus has gone away to heaven, but he has given us the power of attorney to use here on earth. God has given us authority over all the works of the enemy. When we use his name, it is just as if Jesus is here himself, giving us that authority. In Understanding Your Authority in Christ, Pastor Bob Yandian explores that authority from the aspects of prayer, healing, and victory in the Christian life. This series provides a sound scriptural definition of what your authority in Christ is, how you can use that authority, and when you should use it. To order Understanding Your Authority in Christ, visit our website at bobyandian.com. Bob Yandian Ministries is training up a new generation in the Word of God. Because of your generosity and faithfulness, this teaching ministry is able to change countless lives. You will never know until you get to heaven how many people received Jesus, were filled with the Holy Spirit, healed, or found God's will for their life through your support 
and prayers. If you would like to become a partner with Bob Yandian, visit our website at bobyandian.com and click on Partnership. Pastors, if you would like to schedule Bob Yandian to speak at your church, event, or conference, go to bobyandian.com forward slash invite. I want to recap where we were headed to just before the break. I do want you to get this particular series on understanding our authority in the Lord Jesus Christ, because we'll be getting into that when we talk about the name of Jesus Christ. Right now, we're talking about the blood of Christ that has redeemed us from all sin, redeemed us from our sickness by the shedding of blood and the stripes that Jesus bore in his body. That's for us. And so again, what color a preacher is makes no difference. You know, if you were saved as a white person under a black preacher, praise God, because the message has no color. What color Jesus was was makes no difference. His message makes the difference and faith in him as the son of God does. Blood is outside the prejudices of mankind. There's no such thing as black blood, white blood, old blood, educated blood, male blood, female blood. There's no such thing as that. It's simply blood. If you need that transfusion, can you imagine the doctors about says, we, we found some blood for you before you can have a transfusion. Say, wait just a moment. Is he my same color? Well, why would I want some other color? What if it was the person to have an education? He says, well, I don't know. No. Well, I want to make sure he did because I don't want to have some ignorant blood inside me. I want educated blood inside me. It wasn't a woman, was it? Well, uh, yes, it was. Well, I don't want it then. Are you? What's wrong with you? Simply comes back to this. None of those things matter because when it comes to accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we simply stand before him as we are. And Jesus died for all mankind and shed his blood. The thing that unites all of us together is blood. And he shed that for us. Again, as I said, he didn't shed his skin for us. He shed his blood blood for us. And so this particular series will tell you, and this teaching is on this particular series on the difference between the blood and the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to have this particular series. I know every time I get on here, I tell you how important the series is. A book is, a CD is, a flash drive, all these things. But you know what? The word of God is something that lasts forever in your life. I'm not selling you National Geographic. I'm not selling you some encyclopedia that might be interesting at the moment and then not true 20 years from now. I'm telling you something that stands forever. Ever, for all eternity. You can pass down to your children, pass to other ministers, pass to other friends. I'm telling you, the word of God can be handed down and handed down. And there's people that still come to me and said, I had your cassettes from 1970 something, whatever, and I don't have a player for them anymore. Do you have these things on CD? And you understand something, the mode might have changed and the platform of it might have changed from a cassette to a CD and now to a flash drive. But you know what? The information on it lives and abides forever. It is eternal. That's why you should be spending a lot more money on spiritual material than you are on natural material, than you are on magazines that you throw away or all the other things you pick up when you're in a grocery store. Nothing wrong with those things, but I think you ought to outnumber those things and spend a whole lot more money on books and on publications and on and on recordings and all kinds of things like this, products that in, take the word of God and help you place it into your heart. So again, thank you so much. Again, Jesus didn't shed his skin for us. He shed his blood for us. What the blood of the covenant has done. What has it done? Acts chapter 20 and verse 28 says this, the church, which he has purchased with his own blood. He purchased the church with his blood because when he purchased the church, it's the forgiving of sins. And the forgiving of sins came by the shedding of Jesus' blood. Romans chapter three and verse 25 says, we have propitiation. That is, God is satisfied with us, righteousness through faith in his blood. The shedding of blood brought remission of sins, forgiveness of sins, propitiation. The word propitiation means satisfaction. It simply means God was propitiated eternally by the shed blood of Jesus Christ, where he'd only been propitiated temporarily in the Old Testament, temporarily appeased by the shedding of animals' blood because it never could eternally remove sin. And once sin was eternally removed as a barrier between man and God, by the shed blood of Jesus, no animal's blood needed to be shed anymore. Jesus Christ settled it once and for all. And the word propitiation comes around the aroma of the of the uh, sacrifices of the Old Testament, that an aroma went up before the people and before God, and it went up in the smoke of the sacrifice. And also the, uh, the different uh, things that were used around it offered a fragrance up to God, a sweet smelling savor to God in his nostrils. The point of it was, is every sacrifice that was offered, God it's okay. It's okay. But when Jesus Christ arose from the dead, God, he said, I am eternally satisfied. There is that 
uh, that with satisfaction that is eternal with God now because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. That's the purpose of the blood of Jesus Christ. Romans chapter five and verse nine tells us we were justified by his blood. Justified simply means my sins have been eternally settled between me and God. And it was done by Jesus Christ at the cross. And when I accepted Jesus, the whole plan of redemption was made complete in me, by me accepting Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. First Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 16, believers fellowship with each other because of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because my sins have been judged, my sins have been forgiven, I stand around those who are now part of the body of Christ and all of us rejoice in one thing, we are united together by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter one and verse seven and 1 Peter chapter one and verse 19 tells us we all have had redemption by his blood. The word redeem means to buy back and God bought us back from the slave market. We were sold into slavery by the sin of Adam and when Adam sinned, he threw the whole world into sin and all of us ended up in the slave market because Adam and Eve walked headfirst into the slave market. The door was closed behind them and they could not get out. And every child that is born from them is in the slave market. Adam and Eve were made and created in God's image. But when Adam and Eve sinned, then later on the children they had came from their image. In fact, it says in chapter five of the book of uh, Genesis, that whenever the son came into this earth, Seth, it says he was born in Adam's image, in Adam's likeness. And of course, a few chapters before that, uh, Adam was created in God's image, in God's likeness, but he lost that image of God. And now the children were born after. That's why we are born in Adam. That's why we are all born in Adam's image and Adam's likeness into this earth. But the good news is if we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we die in Adam and are reborn into the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is the purpose of the word redemption. We have been redeemed by his blood. Next of all, Ephesians 2.13, we were brought near by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We were afar off. Now we've been brought close by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and now we are in his kingdom. So again, we have been brought near by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 20, we have reconciliation or peace through his blood. To be reconciled, if two people are fighting, we want them to be reconciled. We have been reconciled to God, and it tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it tells us that we have been reconciled to the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus has reconciled the world to himself. All we have to do is now be reconciled to God. And so reconciliation means that God now, but there's peace between us and God. To be reconciled is the procurement and the bringing of peace into a situation where there has been war and there has been fighting. And up until the time I accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I was fighting God. But you know what? He was never fighting me because reconciliation, Jesus person's reconciliation on the cross and reconcile all man to God. But now I was the one fighting him. I needed to come and be reconciled to him. And then now the whole thing is over. I'm no longer at war with God. God was no longer at war with me. He hadn't been since the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is what brought reconciliation, reconciliation through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 12 tells us, we have been sanctified by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sanctification simply means I stand before God as clean now. I have been sanctified and sanctification in my inward man now spills over to sanctification sanctification, my outward man, is to where I begin to walk in righteousness. I begin to walk in my daily walk as a redeemed believer in Jesus Christ. Holiness on the outside is that visible image of what God did for me on the inside where I have been sanctified by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. First John 1, 7 tells us our fellowship with God comes from the removal of our sins by the blood of Jesus Christ. Then 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that cleansing goes back to verse seven, that we were cleansed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, when the uh, leper was uh, healed or, or cleansed in the Old Testament, which they never were and had to go see the priest, the first one that ever went to see the priest was under Jesus' ministry. And that priest probably had to scramble to find where this was located when that uh, leper came to him in Leviticus chapter 14. But two were uh, cleansed in the Old Testament. The first one, Miriam, was before the law, so she never went to see the priest. And the second one was Naaman, and Naaman was a Syrian. And so he was no, didn't have to go see the priest because he was not a Jew. So the only two that were uh, delivered of leprosy in the Old Testament didn't go see a priest. The one that was delivered by Jesus in Matthew chapter 8 did go to see the priest. And if you go through that particular chapter dealing with the leper, the law 
law of the leper, you'll find out that the priest had to go outside the camp to find the leper. And the leper out there would show himself, the priest would look at him, then a, then a sacrifice was offered outside the camp. That allowed the leper to come inside the camp and for seven days he stayed around uh, by his tent and he'd been shaved from head to foot, probably covered with something where people could come by and look at him because the priest examined him out here, but the people had to examine him in here. Out here, you've been saved, but once you come into the camp of the church, then people have the right to to look at you and observe your lifestyle, and you can show them. But then there was another sacrifice offered on the eighth day, and it was called the sin offering and the trespass offering, as was the offering that was outside of the camp. In the Old Testament, Leviticus, Numbers called what was done outside the camp the sin offering and the trespass offering, but that was for sinners, those outside the camp. Once you come into the camp, there is another sacrifice called a sin offering and a trespass offering, and this is forgiveness of the sins of believers. Out here was the cleansing of sins and the forgiving of sins of an unbeliever. In here, now that you're a believer, there's still another sacrifice inside because there is there is forgiveness of the daily sins we commit as a Christian. Outside the camp, this particular sacrifice brings us into the kingdom of God and sends us to heaven. But inside the camp, sin doesn't keep you from going to heaven. It robs you of the blessings of the life that God has for Christians, prosperity and happiness and joy and peace, these types of things. And that's what sin robs you of in your own personal life and even hinders your prayer life immensely. And so that's why we have the two. But in both cases, it was the shedding of blood. The purpose of blood is for forgiveness of sins. The shedding of blood is for the forgiveness of sins. And Revelation chapter one and verse five simply says that we are washed from our sins by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And again, in 1 John 1, 9, it, we are cleansed from all unrighteousness through the blood of Jesus Christ. So blood cleanses unbelievers and believers from sin. It brings sinners to the new birth, but it restores and keeps Christians in fellowship with God himself, just like in your own family. You know, the parents have children, but there's times when children do something wrong. They're no longer, it's not said of them, they're no longer children. They are children, but they are as children who have lost their fellowship with their parents. Something stands in the way and that needs to be restored. In other words, they're your children, but they have done something wrong and that needs to be settled. It's not an issue of whether they're your child. It's an issue of whether they're an obedient child and there's peace in the family. The moment that child says two words, I'm sorry, they're forgiven and the parents forgive them and suddenly this thing is restored and that thing, that barrier, that, that mist in the house, that particular feeling in the house is gone because why? Now the kids came back into fellowship with mom and dad and mom and dad are back in fellowship with that child. That's what the blood of Jesus Christ does for a Christian. We're gonna continue on this subject tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Ministers, you can access valuable resources free at ministersclub.com. You'll find topical studies, sermon outlines, PDF books, answers to many questions, and plenty of encouragement, all free. Just go to ministersclub.com. You can order resources, become a partner, or browse free articles and podcasts by visiting our website at bobyandian.com. You can also join our mailing list and receive weekly devotions and the latest ministry updates. If you would like to contact Bob Yandian Ministries, visit bobyandian.com and click on Contact. To contact us by mail, use the address on your screen. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. We'll see you next time on Student of the Word with Bob Yandian.